Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, my Sunday night weekly recap. What happened in real estate last week? Well, on Monday of my live show, I made the comment that I was starting to see things soften a little bit and that we needed to watch it closely. And I was I was basing it on a couple numbers, and most of them were here. We saw a little dip in the number of new listings that were coming on. But prior to that, there was a little run-up in new listings. So as I took a look at Monday, I saw this run-up from last week, and then I saw a dip in new contracts and said, if this trend continues, it's worth watching. But what we've seen since is new listings have gone down a little bit and come up just a little bit, but there was a huge uptick in new contracts over the past seven days. It really was kind of surprising to me. We're up to about 3,200, and that hasn't happened in a long, long time. And it's especially surprising in the face of the huge interest rate spike that we saw this week. So in Wednesday, the uh, CPI numbers came out. They came out hotter than expected. expected. And uh, so the bond traders are like, boy, it pretty much dashes any hopes of a rate cut in May and uh, or in June. That's the next round where if they're going to raise or lower rates, they're going to do it in June. So the bond market reacted and uh, rates went up. In fact, I, I talked to Pat about it here. Yeah, this is the day that we had on Wednesday right here. I mean, the here. bond... It was down 100 basis points, 100 basis points. The MBS treasuries were up significantly. So now we're starting to see some stabilization here the last couple of days. We've had a decent day. This Today it was up 36 basis points. So we're craw clawing back some of the losses. But like you said, the central bank didn't do anything, but the, the treasury market, the MBS market, did the work for the central bank, basically, taking rates up higher. So that's what people don't realize. The average person looks at, you know, when they announce this information, oh, the Fed just cut the rates or increased the rates. The market's already doing it's It's digging the hole for the market every day. It's digging away. It's, you know, digging a deeper, or dig, throwing dirt in a hole. So it's been this trajectory of obviously the inflation trajectory has been, um, it's still there. And now we had talked, I mean, I, we talked about this beginning of the year. I, I thought this was going to be a year of just muddling along. And that's kind of what we're seeing. So what we recapped on the Friday show was, you know, the central bank didn't do anything um, except we just saw some new, uh, after some pretty high employment numbers, which were kind of foggy, the market didn't move at all looking at that, but the bond market reacted wildly when it came to looking at the, uh, CPI numbers, and uh, we just had a very negative week. We got up to uh, a rate here sitting at about 7.37. So we were about 7.1, 6.9 to 7.1 the beginning of the week, and that all got erased really quick. And what Pat was pointing out there was that, you know, it, it rates went up. It, they go, if the chart goes down, rates go up, and then it kind of stabilized. So they didn't go back to where they started. And so as I'm sitting there looking at the new contracts that come on board, I think it's a safe assumption to say, well, that's probably not going to continue the rest of the week and uh, or even the rest of the month. I don't see anything where interest rates are, are going to come down and assist buyers. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, and it's not a bad thing for sellers either, because we have noticed uh, in some of the readings that we saw this week that there's a lot of cash buyers out there and a lot of buyers coming in with a lot of equity. Uh, that are moving for whatever reason, and they uh, putting a large amount of money down on a house, so the interest rate spikes really don't affect them that much. We are seeing some price changes, I noticed this week, and they're not huge. We're up to about 2,206 versus last week was 2,071. Like I say, that's not a that's not a huge number. I also noticed this week as the new uh, numbers came out for rent, that rent is not going down, in fact, it's been going up the price per square foot for rent. And that's kind of discouraging, but I expect to see that change as we get going. We're going to see uh, more and more of these apartments start to come online. And it's just a matter of time before rent goes down because we're seeing some overbuilding on multi family housing. What we are not seeing, it didn't see any indication this week was an increase in listings. It's pretty flat. As we look at the week, it's just kind of a straight line 
I mean, we're really in one week went from 15,600 to 15,700. Big deal, right? If we get up to about 19,000 and our new contracts don't follow, then expect prices to even out. We're growing at about 6% annually now. Expect that to go away if we get up to about 19,000 listings. Now, are we? So far, I'm not seeing any indication that that's happening now. Um, and as we get to closer to summer, um, who knows? Well, I don't know what's going to go on. <laughs> There's a big Utah in other news this week, a big Utah developer that uh, is buying all this land out by the alfalfa farms about 90 miles west of uh, Phoenix, and they're putting in these big solar farms. We're seeing a lot of that. When I went to a uh, ranch and farm appraisal summit, one of the things I kept hearing more and more was a lot of our farmland is being gobbled up by solar farms. Now, this particular one is sitting over a big aquifer, and they've been using a lot of water, and so this is not uh, not bad news. Um, unless those solar panels uh, spring a leak, they got a lot of toxic chemicals inside them. I bring that up because that happened in Kansas. Had this huge solar field up there, 410 solar panels, I think is what it was, 410. No, I'm sorry, it was 41,000 solar panels. A big hailstorm came in there, and wiped them all out, punched all kinds of holes in them, and uh, they started having some problems with these chemicals leaking into some of the creeks around there. So that's getting uh, kind of ugly if they if that does happen. We don't have those big hailstorms here. And it looks like we're going to stay right here. As I look at this week's volume and the volatility that we had in rates, most of our sales volume just kind of stayed level. So there's activity going on. It's not going crazy. It's not falling off the face of the earth. It's just staying right here. The hopes of an interest rate dash as people were shouting from the rooftops that we were going to have four to six rate cuts. Pretty darn obvious that's not happening. Wondering now, the bond traders are wondering if we're even going to have two or one or if we're even going to have an increase. So they are pricing in that we're not going to see anything change in May. Now, as we head into Sunday, this is Saturday night. It looks like we're headed for a volatile week that we might have been expecting because Iran is lobbing missiles into Israel, and that is really about to disrupt the oil market. The oil futures today shot up to almost $90 a barrel. They're back down to $84 a barrel today, Saturday at about 6 o'clock. So we'll see what happens next week, Monday. When the market's open in the United States, and as you know, when oil goes up, all activity tends to slow down. So let's see what happens next week. Until then, I hope you had a great week. See you Monday morning live at 8.30. Take care.